There we go. Okay, so now we're recording for future use. Okay, so like um, Lori did yesterday, she did the payroll, uh, preparing for the payroll yesterday. And then um, today I'm just gonna be doing day two of the payroll processing. And um, it shouldn't be too long of a day today. Um, not too much to go over. Um, again, you can find this under the SSD trainings. If you go to SSD trainings, down under here and down at the bottom, ITC overview training materials. Sorry, I'm trying to catch everybody that's coming in on the meeting here. So I've got a few coming in. Okay. I'll try to catch everybody as they come in. So again, yes, we're going to be going over um, day two. So the first thing um, we're going to do is I'm just filing the checklist that we have out under um, the, our appendix. Checklist, payroll processing. So we did uh, update this a little bit. So it might look a little different than what you had seen prior if you um, use this a lot. Um, just kind of simplified it a little bit. Um, next year, what we're going to do is actually we're going to take off all the classic names and we're gonna wait one more year and then we're gonna update it and remove all classic um, of these, what it used to be for the ones that came over from classic that know what these I and I Cal few pay, but as of right now, we're gonna leave those on. So I'm gonna start at number eight, uh, initialize a payroll. Okay. Um, so what we wanna do, um, as before Lori uh, yesterday, she got you ready for the payroll, adding new employees, um, adding anything in future that needs to be added from um, either going through attendance, the employee dashboard attendance, um, future import um, under um, utilities, um, so what I'm going to be doing just kind of the opposite. I'm going to be doing the current part of it. So what we're going to do first is initialize your payroll. Okay, so your initialization of your payroll. This is just the beginning of getting your information coming, um, bringing everybody in um, that's in future or have stretch pay employees um, to bring them in. So, sorry, another one coming in. There we go. And then for the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and um, start our payroll. So um, the payroll description can be anything but the district wants to be. Um, I usually use what my pay date is. And it's sorry about our old, um, these are our test documents and these are itemized and these have not been updated for a few years. Um, probably what you saw yesterday, I think Lori was using mine. Um, so it's not up to date, but anything, I mean, it's all up to date with our releases. It's just that I have old dates. So, but everything should work the same. So I usually just use a payroll description of what the payroll is of the paid month. Um, again, you have your different um, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, um, or monthly. So you just um, have to select what uh, pay plan that this district is using. I use pay plan for my test document. And then also, where are they at in the pay cycle for their payroll? Um, the first pay of the month, you have the two, uh, second pay of a two pay month. And also for uh, biweekly districts, they're gonna have a second pay of a three pay month. So they have to remember, they make sure they select those. And then also they can do a third pay of a month. So mine is, I'm on my second pay of a two pay month. And then I'm going to, you can also um, select it by um, your start date by, uh, by the calendar, or you can type it in. And I'm just going to type it in just because I'm so far behind in our dates. It would take me a while to get back there. So I'm just going to start 14, 2021. And then my pay date. Um, for the ones that are kind of newer, um, um, if you're not used to initializing payroll, you have an option to suppress voluntary deductions. So this would be that it would not bring in any of like um, annuities that are set up for employees. It would just pay the taxes that are set up. 
like your federal, state, city, OSDI, uh, Medicare. Those are um, taxes that need to come out um, if they are set up. And then the suppressed voluntary deductions, if you decide to do that, um, that might be maybe you're running, um, have to pay um, all your employees maybe um, a special pay of some sort for um, extra cash, I don't know. Um, they can suppress the voluntary deductions at that time. And then that, and then the, any of those deductions won't come out on that. So they can actually do that during this regular payroll if they wanna do that, or um, they can also do that um, on um, in a special pay. They ignore direct deposit flag. That is if you want to um, ignore direct deposit, most districts are probably all into direct deposits now, probably hardly have any um, employees that have checks anymore. So um, you wanna go ahead and select the ignore direct deposit. If you want to select, you know, if, if you want employees to get checks, then they then all the employees will get checks then. And if they ignore this direct deposit, um, and if they have like three different direct deposits set, set up for maybe one checking, three savings or something, it's all going to go into one check then for that employee if you select this. And then you also have your special pay. Um, that would be if um, you have to run a special pay, maybe employee got missed in the payroll or somebody came in with a late time slip and they're then you still have to pay them. Um, the district still has that option to run the uh, special pay. We usually tell them to use an off date on that case. Um, they can use the same dates if they haven't run any of their employer distribution reports yet. Um, because if they try to do that or retirement, it's gonna double up. Um, it's going to bring in the regular pay, and then it's going to try to bring in this pay too if they use the same date. So um, if it just depends how far they are in their payroll at that time, um, if they're ready, submitted that all that stuff, the retirement and everything and submission, then they're going to want to make sure they use an off date. But if they haven't, then they can use the same dates. And then what that would do, it will pull in that special pay also with that regular pay, and they can run the employer distribution all at once. So again, it's just the timing manner of where they're at when they're running a special pay. The next thing I'm going to do is you can select your employees, um, which ones you're going to pay in this regular start and stop date. So I'm just gonna go down and select mostly all of them. And then I have this one left here because these would be employees that maybe are on a lag pay time or pay slip um, that come in at a two week pay lag. Um, so what you can do, and this would be very helpful for those districts that have these type of employees to pay um, for retirement to make sure they get picked up their retirement days. Because if they are just including them in here and they have their attendance and it's prior and to these dates, it's not gonna get picked up. So we always suggest if you have these type of employees, definitely utilize this add date range selection. Um, that will be so helpful in making sure that these people get their credit in their days, I should say. So that would be like if I'm two weeks prior to what my 8-1 date is. And then I'm gonna bring, bring this pay group in. So many in that pay group, um, gets paid a two, two pay lag or a two week lag pay um, is now getting included. And then when I run my retirement part later, which is gonna be on day three with Lori, but you can include that and put it as an other. And a lot of times you have to call SERS or make sure SERS is aware that you do this pay lag um, and add date range that you're different. Your pay date's the same, but you're just gonna have different start and stop dates. So again, you probably have to make sure you call service and make sure they know that and get that all set up. But I believe you can do other and then they can include those and also get submitted. Um, again, you can do um, as many as you want. I don't know, some, maybe some big districts have several different start and um, stop dates within that one pay date for different pay groups. So you have the option to add more. But I'm just gonna add one for now. Okay, so I have all my pay groups on that I want, and I'm gonna initialize payroll. And then what you're hoping to see is all green. And if it's a red one, then you, um, you will, will get an error report 
and you want to make sure you run that and get that corrected. Um, if you have um, syncing, make sure you uh, account sync um, before each starting initializing payroll. I probably should have mentioned that, but Lori probably mentioned it yesterday, but you probably always want to do that before you um, start a payroll. Just to make sure, which is underneath your US um, integration and account sync. And then if you have an employee that um, account was used, you're gonna see a warning right here, a message. And a lot of districts miss this, they ignore it. And then they find, cut to the point where they're trying to post. And then they're saying um, that they get in a post error report, say this account is um, not valid or not synced. Um, and, then, and then that's where we get a lot of tickets because um, they're not paying attention to this warning. They're kind of skipping over it. Um, you want to make sure you run your error report at this time. And I have no red errors. You would see the errors in red and those have to be fixed. Now, I don't have any. I just have info messages on mine, but you can go through those and make sure that um, they all look good before you, sorry, got one more coming in, um, before you move on. So it's always good to double check. And you should get it on, um, excuse me, you should just make sure you go ahead and correct all those errors. Always good to double check. Okay, so the next thing is, um, all right, let me look on my list here where I'm at. All right, so if you're in um, a middle of a payroll, um, you can have an option if you forget um, to add a pay group, um, maybe you didn't bring all your pay groups in and you're already started and you already got half most of your stuff done and you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to add this pay group in. You still have time to do that. You can do that at this time. If you didn't do it under that additions that I showed you in the beginning, you still have time to do that here on this. Select pay groups and, and put in the start and stop date. Now, if you forgot a pay group and um, you don't want to delete and start over, you can just use the same start and stop date as your regular payroll and just bring that pay group in. So you still have that option. Even so if you don't want to completely start over, you don't have to. Um, the next thing is um, I wanted to kind of go through the delete payroll and exceptions. Um, sometimes this can get kind of confusing on what what is this uh, if you are having to delete and start over? So if you're gonna use the delete payroll and exceptions and exactly what that does here, I have employees I'll run a pay report here for you. So these employees here that are already brought into my payroll, if I add, uh, like a miscellaneous pay to here to this Brent Hearst for his position one, that's considered an employee that's been brought into the payroll. So he's not a payroll exception. These are employees that have been brought in through the initialization of, initialization of the payroll. And you once you add that, he will stay. So if I go in, And I'm just gonna, Zimmerman. Zimmerman is one of my employees that is on my spreadsheet. Or is on my there, and here he is already. So now if I go in and I say, oh, I need to add a miscellaneous paid to him. And this is, I'm adding him right directly underneath his pay because he's already brought in. And I'm just gonna add extra $50 for, so now he's in. So now I added him under that. Now I have another employee um, that I have on my pay report. Where's he at? Fitzpatrick, let's see where is he at? Fitzpatrick. All right. So here we have him, but we have an employee that has position one already, but I need to add a, maybe a, a pay two for him. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a pay two for him. 
It's Catherine. So let me make sure I get the right person here. And page two. And then you can add your pay and how much and save. Then I have an employee that I want to add completely new. This employee is not pulled into the payroll at all. So I'm gonna add him into current and add this new position. So we're gonna give him some gross. Okay, so now in my test account here, what I'm gonna show is go back to payroll processing. If I run another pay report, so now you're gonna see my Zimmerman. Here I added a miscellaneous pay for, for her. And then I also did for Fitz, at a complete whole new position, even though he was pulled into payroll, but that position was not pulled into payroll. And then also added a new employee that was never pulled into payroll and added a position for him. So now when I go back and I do delete payroll, it's only going to keep my Zimmerman because he was actually pulled in. So if I go back to processing, keep your fingers crossed, I'm gonna tell you right. Oops. Sorry, goes back to future. There's my process. So now you can see if you had to start over and do delete payroll, it deleted everybody, even the Fitzpatrick, even though he had a, he was brought into payroll, but we added a whole new position underneath him. So that didn't count. So he was deleted out completely. So you're going to lose those. So it's kind of, I think, uh, misconception, um, you know, people don't understand that what the delete payroll will do. Now, if you do, if you want to delete payroll and completely start over, then you're going to do your exceptions. So if I'm, so then, um, then you would, like I said, use that delete um, payroll and exceptions. So now um, if we initialize the payroll again, And add my date range for my other additions. Okay, my date range. Oh, I'm gonna double that. Okay. So then when we go to current and if we go to Zimmerman, and there is our miscellaneous pay brought back in from future. So that stayed. And if we go to future, he is gone now. So he's brought back in. So, so if they want to completely delete the payroll and exceptions and start over, then they can do the delete payroll and exceptions. So just kind of wanted to go over that, what that um, delete payroll will do. Okay, moving on. The next thing um, we're going to go over is adding um, people to um, current. Um, we, you have a couple options to do this. Um, you can go right to current if you forgot an employee that needed to be added. Again, uh, maybe another late time slip came in. You can do that right here. I'm going to add um, Billy King came in, says so here's my time slip. I'm going to add that person in for her miscellaneous, um, maybe she was a um, sub. 
$5 an hour. Again, the rate will automatically come over if it's already set up in your compensation, it will come in, but you can change it at this time if you want to do that. Okay. Um, the next thing is, um, I wanted to show the, you can put in your hours for work here, your description, you applies for retirement, is it a supplemental or what kind of supplemental tax option it is. Now, if you want to change what, pay, what um, a payroll account this employee is going to get um, paid from, you can do that here at that time. So if you go in and add, you're gonna see where you can change it for a fixer percent and then the expenditure, expenditure account. And this is coming from the employee's payroll account um, that is set up for this position number one only. Now, if you're saying, I don't wanna pay her out of these accounts, you have that option here, okay? And you can have this option here. Right now, I have it set, hopefully it did not, in my systems, configuration under specific account search limit, I have this set and checked and it's defaulted for all districts when this was set up, when this was created um, to only show object codes of 100. So if I go back, you're gonna see object codes 100 are only showing right now. But districts still have the option if they wanna include all accounts here, it's gonna show all object codes then. So districts still have that um, capability of turning off that flag, even though you might have it set here, they still have the ability to go in here and change it. Okay. The next thing I wanted to show was, um, I'll just go ahead and select an account here. You highlight it, select it, confirm and it's brought in. Another thing I wanted to show was these two right here, leave projection employer distribution. This is another configuration that districts can set up. I can find it here, here it is. Under systems, payroll account default. These employer distribution default bills um, are checked, I believe by default when, we, when it was uh, created here, but they, when they're creating or bringing, um, selecting, these are automatically checked, so they don't have to worry about always checking these. And sometimes districts forget if they don't have that, they forget to check those. So now if they don't want it to be employer distribution, they can just take that off if they want. But if I go in here and save that, I have to refresh, sorry about that, get it to come back in. Now, when I go back in, Bring that employee back in here. Edit, add. Now you see those are no longer checked. So now they would have to check those for every employee that they're adding or going in and adding a specific count payroll account for in future and current. So just depends how um, districts want these two to be set up. It's up to them on that, okay? Um, let's see, the other one I wanted to, in configuration was the overtime one, um, just why we're over here. This is when they're using overtime, when they're creating an overtime for this um, for employees. I'm just gonna accept this real quick. If they're using overtime, um, the pay account will change, payroll account will change to what is entered in these. And these are used for, um, charging in the object code so they can keep track if they want to of how much they're paying in overtime um, on reports on the USAS side. So this is where this object code is coming from. So if you have a district saying, I don't understand why this changed for my employee, this is why, because it's coming and looking at this overtime charge, uh, overtime, um, overtime object code. And um, and that's why I change. And this is being defined by the, the uniform school accounting. And we have that in documentation and right here. So you'll see certified and you see classified and then this um, certified non and then this um, classified non-contributing if they're not. 
And all that means if it's not contributing to a state teacher's retirement or same thing for the um, class, class, classified employees, excuse me. So just to remember that, if, uh, if you get a ticket from an, your district and they're asking why that changed for overtime employee, that is why. Okay. So um, I'll just go ahead and add this one employee in. And save. Let me make sure it works. Okay. All right. Again, if you have any questions, please put in the chat because I don't think my volume is working. Um, so I may not be able to hear you. So if, I, will, I will try to catch if you have um, any questions. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is the pop-up pay report. So if you added a if you added a employee and you just want to double check that employee, how does it look on a pay report real quick? you have that pop-up payroll report that you can use. And here it just shows you that one employee, you can double check, make sure, yep, I added all my three positions that I wanted. Um, everything looks good. And, and you're like, and you make that, check that off your list that, yep, that payer person looks good. Again, you can select all, everybody, if you wanna do um, a payroll report at that time, or you can select, different employees, you can do that also. Okay. Oops, sorry, I had another one coming in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do then is, got to like uh, delete some of these pay reports. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do then is, they added one to current. So your next one is doing your attendance and absent information. So what you want to do is you have, like Lori said yesterday, you have several op options how to add these in. You can do the employee dashboard by attendance. And then you can create it from here, excuse me. So if I want to go ahead and um, add Activity, attendance for him. And again, you have your options. You can do your absences right here too, if you like. If you have absence, then you would have those options there for your attendance. You have your options to um, check the, what if it's certified or classified. And you also have a pay date that you can put in to be picked up. And then also, if you if districts keep track of your who substitutes, you have the option here. Um, since I'm doing the current, so this is where I'm going to automatically I'm going to um, get this to be pulled into current. Okay, so now I'm going to save, and what it's going to say post selected records to current payroll. So again. Right here, you can double check one more time. Is this correct? I want it to be a miscellaneous. Um, again, you can check retirement. You can add retire hours. Again, your employer distribution. You can change that all right here before you actually select that post select. So you have the option to change all these that are not in that dark gray. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and post that. So now it says one record posted to current. So there is one way to do that. The next one is going directly to attendance and creating. And again, you have the option to copy rows. If you add, if you're trying to add multiple days for employee, maybe you have that option. So I'm going to add another one. For Barton, for my for job three, and my activity eight. And again, you have the same um, options. 
and I don't want to add another day for him, but you have the option. And again, you have to choose where you want to post it because now we're in current enough. They post to the future and then they're trying to run um, maybe a current report and they're saying, why isn't this play here? Have them check to make sure they, that it's not sitting out in the future. And then you got to select what your payroll date is or your pay, um, pay option and save. And then again, you have the option to double check one more time. Is that correct? Oops, nope, this is supposed to be 10 units instead of eight. You have that option to do that all right here. And so, so now that's posted into attendance. So here's my Barton down here. I have my two Bartons. Okay, and then your third option is if you're doing your absence and attendance, import. Now I have my, um, a lot of districts have, um, they're from a third party. Again, um, probably Lori had gone over this for the future part of it, um, but they, if districts wait and do it at, after they initialize and pull it into current, then they would be the same setup as the import. And again, we have documentation out there for that under our um, utilities and attendance in our spreadsheet and um, to show you exactly um, what needs to be set up in order for um, that record to be um, you pulled in without errors. So the first thing, um, you want to choose your files. So like if I'm doing my attendance first, you want to pull that in as a CSV after you have your um, file pulled over from your third party. Um, you have your option to choose building IRN or building department code. Now this is only if you don't have that position number included in your spreadsheet. And then what this does, the system knows, okay, I got to look at the building IRN for that employee under that position and it knows exactly what position then it is. Same thing goes for building code, but I'm just gonna choose none because I have that included, my position number included in my spreadsheet. I guess I can show you, here's my spreadsheet that I'm bringing in. So I'm just doing my attendance days. And then the next thing would be, um, uh, the future, which Lori probably did yesterday, and I'm going to do current. And then you have to select your pay date or the uh, payroll that you're working on. And again, the combined attendance entries, um, this would be for, um, I can't remember everything anymore. Um, if you are wanting to combine employee that has multiple attendance days entries, now, the only thing is you want to make sure this is for, for current and future that in the spreadsheet, you have to have the um, employee ID or the number, the job number, pay type, the unit, unit amount, tax option, retirement flag, expenditure count, the leave projection flag, and the employer distribution flag must all match in order for that to work. So if a dish is trying to do this and they're saying it's not combining have them double check to make sure all those flags are matching for those attendance entries because they all have to match in order for that feature to work, okay? The next thing, allow negative lead balances. Again, um, this is uh, what payroll count um, is it going to be charged? Now, if they leave it as defined payroll count, then it's just going to look at what uh, payroll count is set up for that position. Now, if they want to use the sub for a social, um, social security number for the sub, then you can, they can enter a, a certified object code to be used. And again, um, they probably would get that from the USAS side, from the treasurer. Um, what object code am I supposed to use if we're um, going to be charging it to the sub payroll account? Okay, so you got to make sure those are entered correctly. Now, I'm just going to leave it as defined. And then I'm going to go ahead and import in. And 
as we said um, on fiscal service Friday, now we have where if you have errors, they're gonna show down here now and on the error report. So you're gonna see it in both places. But luckily my record loaded with no errors, two records loaded and total current pay amount records loaded too. So would let you know your attendance and also know what current, um, how, how much, um, if it failed or passed on, on loading it to current also, okay? All right, so then there's that. And then I got no errors on my report. So yay on that one. Okay. Now, um, the next thing would be if you have absences. Now I have an absence one that I created um, that I forgot to pull in. I'm like, oh, I gotta get that in there. You don't wanna do it. You know, you might have a whole list that you have to bring in for your absences. So you can do that also in current. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose, excuse me, choose my file. And I think I can find it. Let me see, where'd you go? There we are. All right. And again, you have those options again. Make sure you post it to current, pay date, and then import. And my records load with no issues again. So now I got my absences loaded, got my attendance loaded in um, using current. And then the next thing we want to do notes here, is go in and run your attendance journal, which is under home, SSD attendance journal. So now I put my start and end dates. Again, you can run, run if you wanna check just certain um, classified, separate, certified, separate, um, just up to the district, how they are keeping track and balancing their attendance entries. You can also do just absences, and then they can double check their spreadsheet that they got from their third party, make sure they got everybody in. They can do that, do the same thing for attendance, or they can just add, excuse me, add them all together. So here's my attendance report. And it shows um, everybody that I brought in. And then they can go ahead and just check that off and double check on their um, spreadsheets that they have to make sure they got everybody in there. Okay. The next one I wanted to show, um, I don't know if many people know about this one is under reports. Now this can be found. Let's see, payroll processing. Current. Right there, current pay report. <clears throat> this would show everything that you added in current, everything that was brought over from future, and they can do a double check one more time to verify they have everything. Now the report that's listed under here, um, I added a few more different options because you can go in here and add if you want to. Like I added supplemental tax option. I know a lot of districts, they run a report, pay report, and they're like, why is the taxes so different from last time? A lot of times it's this uh, supplemental tax option. They selected the wrong one. If they're adding them in um, current or future manually, they might've selected the wrong thing. So this would help districts a lot in showing um, and they can run this report off before they and keep it. So I'm just going to, um, you can actually add, if you're running it just for a certain code, you can do that. I just went in under configuration filters and added that myself. So really um, you, can, you can do whatever you want on that. I don't know if I'll get anything. Let me see if I, I don't know if I have, I added employee with number 32 while we're doing that here. Yeah, I did, okay. So um, you can just check and it actually shows the name, how many retire hours. Um, I know it's a little jumbled. So if you want, you can take the last name off first name or you can just do the last name or you can get the number and it kind of pulls the report over and makes it a little bit more prettier. Um, if it was the employer distribution flag set at that time, supplemental tax option, what did they choose? This is a big one right here. A lot of times districts, um, select the wrong one and then their taxes are off and they can't figure out why. So this is why. So this report might be very handy to them. 
And again, they can utilize it and change it and save it on their desktop or under their home reports to however they want. Now, if I run it without, and then here is the report. Again, they can go down if they have a spreadsheet, um, alphabetical order of last name, they can do this. But if it's too jumbled, too much, again, they can go in and run it by pay group. If they want by pay group, add a pay group in here and run it by pay group if that is easier for them to read that report. But again, I think, you know, they could print this off and keep it somewhere. Um, this would be very helpful um, if districts have um, questions then on how it was entered when they were entering them in, in um, future and current. Okay. I think that's a very helpful option there. Okay. So moving on, then um, let's see. The next one would be, let's go back to our payroll. Okay. Now, once they got that all in, um, if they make any corrections to an employee's compensation or position, um, they're going to need to modify that pay group. Now, just to remember, if they use current in that pay group and they added exceptions in, it's going to erase them. So you just got to remember by doing that, um, they are going to have to make sure that they balance again. So rerun probably reports to make sure they're still in balance, that they didn't wipe anything out that they added in current for that pay group specifically. So I'm not going to change anything. So I'm just going to go back. But I just want to remind you of that. Now, if you change a payroll item, you're fine. But we always say, if you're changing something, always rerun the pay report for that employee. You can do it in the pop-up pay report, well, which I call pop-up repair report from Classic for the employee, uh, from you guys that know that. Um, you can just run that pop or that pay report uh, for that employee. Make sure it changed. You know, sometimes you just always want to double check before you get too far and they're like way into the payroll and post it and then it didn't work. Um, it's always a good uh, to just rerun the pay report to make sure it updated, always. Um, okay, so the next thing would be our pay report, which I'll go ahead and run. Now, again, you have those options to run it by different sort by. You can run it by a PDF, plain text, um, HTML, or Excel. Again, you can begin each employee on a new page if that's easier for districts to read or and include employer payroll item um, amounts. I always check that because I always like to see the employee portion and the employer portion on the pay report. Show only report totals. Now districts might run this one time or a couple of times too, just to make sure their totals are looking good instead of trying to, you know, maybe they have a big district and they just want to look at the reports. And I'll, re I'll run one here. And they can do that also, just a quick, they can go guide through, look, make sure, yep, everything looks good here. All my dates, you can see that my pay group 32 has a different start date here, so they can double check that. And then also they can come down here and say, yep, it looks good. I have my gross, my total direct deposits, um, my total employees, and how much were paid. And then also anything that was brought in from future and then the total current at that time. And if they keep track of miscellaneous payments that they um, add in, they can make sure that that figure matches to what they're showing. So it's just a quick um, look if they, if they wanna run their pay report and not run it with the detail at that time. So I'll go ahead and generate with my detail. And then now I have my um, employees brought in. So now you can see I have my employees for um, that were imported in using um, my attendance import. And then my King overtime for um, the Billy King. So again, they can just do a double quick look on that and make sure everything looks good at that time. 
Okay. Um, again, they probably want to go ahead and run an error report. Always good to run an extra error report just to make sure everything looks good. They're not missing anything. Okay. The next thing, hopefully I'm trying not to miss anything here. The pay. We did that, we did that. Yeah, pay amount summary report. So then this one is, um, is the total of the current and total um, future growth by um, pay groups. And then this report can be used for districts to balance. And you can balance that against your pay report to make sure. So again, you have, um, you display your grand totals. Again, you can do a page break on the employee. You can um, sort it by a different option here by sort by, I do name. And again, you include subtotals by selected sort options. And then that would mean um, by select pay group. So if I, let's see, I just do that. Data return, so I don't have an employee under there. Trying to find one that I have here. Let's just do that. Hopefully I'll bring somebody in. All right, there we go. So then all it does is just show employee totals. So again, it's up to the district how they wanna run this report. Um, I'll go ahead and run it with everybody. So now they can double check this. And then on this one, I just want to um, just kind of go through some different things. Like on, on the all paid totals section, um, that should match your total gross minus non-taxable reimbursement um, on your pay report. So that should match down here at the bottom. That should match your pay report. Well, let's see. 234, 938, 23938, yep. So those two match. And again, um, the another thing I wanted to mention on this pay sum report is the deferred DOC. Um, the deferred, if you have deferred DOC amounts for employees, this would not be included in the total pay column. It's going to show in the other pay column here or do for docs. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, when you're doing a payoff, like for the last pay for an employee, the LPE, which is your regular wages, that's gonna show in your regular wage column. And then your LPAs, which is your accrual, that's gonna show in the accrued um, wage column. So I just wanna point that out um, for some of those notes. Um, and again, um, you can find that in our, excuse me, in our pay, some report and documentation of how what um, how it is pulling in those different pay types. Okay. All right. No questions. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is a pay item detail, and this is your the, the deductions for the employee side and the employer side. So again, they can run it for one payroll item or a couple payroll items that they want by selecting it or selecting and doing the select over. You can begin on each payroll item on a new page. If they like to see that a clean cut on each one, they can do that here. and they can sort it by employee name or employee number. So I'm gonna go ahead and just generate this. And then at the bottom here, you're gonna have the number of paid items that are showing on the report, total employee share portion, that's all the employee, what the employee paid out of pocket, and then also what the employee share is the total in the column of the um, employer share, excuse me, over here. And then you have your actual gross total and your total gross. 
So they can use this for balancing also if they keep um, a detailed spreadsheet of, um, of the deductions or how many um, employees, I guess. So the next thing, so they can go through this and just make sure that everything looks good according to what their spreadsheets are showing. And this should be match what is showing when they, um, after they post pay or run outstanding pay, payables. Okay. All right, on to my next one. So the next one is the BUDDIS, which is classic name. That used to be the projection report of um, the budget distribution report. Oh, excuse me, I forgot the pay item summary part. Sorry about that. So the pay item summary report, all that's gonna be is a summary of what you just read here in the detail report. So you can do that here. And then what that does is just summarizes it. You don't have the detail of each employee. So again, if they wanna run this and they can do another check to make sure that they're, um, amounts that they're thinking are matching what the, um, the software or the payroll is bringing up for them. And again, these should, total should balance if you, if you run it the same way. All right, um, now on to the budget distribution. So the next one is the budget, um, but this, that I call it. Again, they have options on how to report this um, report sort by option. They can run it by the full account or they have all these other options they can run. Again, up to the district, how they want to run that report or they can run it several different ways if they wanna just uh, make sure everything looks um, in order. I'm just gonna go ahead and run it um, in the full account and they can have it in um, CSV or PDF. That goes my, it's timed out on me. Hopefully report finished. Don't like it when it times out. <laughs> okay, so here is my a report and now it shows the amounts. Now, another um, balancing option is if they keep um, if they keep reports or they, they balance to this, they can go ahead and make sure that what fund they're using has that a gross amount expended for this payroll. And then again, they have their fund totals down here at the bottom they can use for balancing and the total of the funds then. Okay. Let me get back in there. And then the last one is the pay account distribution report. And this would be your bud debt, which used to be back in the day of classic terms. And then again, you have the same options. And this is going to show who for each account is it being paid from. So here, we just have no names. And then here we have who is getting paid out of it. So the first count, $300 for that account, it was Jim Moody for $300. So again, they can go through here to make sure their object codes all look good. Sorry, object codes here, or um, making sure they're getting paid out of the right account at that time. Corrections can still be made at this time. If they have to go there and update that account, they can do a modify on um, that employee and uh, update it through the current. So they still have time to check and make sure they are um, balancing. Okay. So the next thing then, once you get everything and they said everything looks good, we got every employee in that we need to, we checked our attendance, we checked our cur pay um, report that we ran and we're all in balance. Um, we're ready to go ahead and post the payroll. 
I'll go ahead and post the payroll. So making sure I didn't forget anything. So now we're processing. Okay, we did good. We had no errors up here. We have um, a no um, post error report. And you only get the post error report if you have errors after trying to post. Um, so again, um, you can go ahead and run. I don't have a post error report, but your post error report would be, and of course I don't have one. I don't think even in documentation. Um, but it would be payroll post error report. So that is what it would be named under here, It'd be a different tab. So the error report again, is just what it was prior. Again, you can run that report again if you want. So always have them double check their error reports one more time because they can still on post before they do their outstanding payables and fix things still at this time. Okay, so now, um, they can run the pay report one more time if they want and, and double check between the prior, the pre-post to the post payroll report to make sure nothing changed. Um, they can go ahead and run the re detail reports, pay item summary, budget this, and pay account one more time if they like. Those reports are out there. Um, one thing I did want to show um, in file archive, when you um, post the payroll, I don't have my module set up to see the file archive. Okay, so, but if you go to utilities, file archive, the reports are going to post automatically to the file archive for your payroll um, per pay reports. Um, I believe there's five of them. And you can see this under utilities and file archive. You're gonna, you're automatically, it's gonna send the pay report budget distribution report, payroll account distribution detail report, pay amount summary report, and the pay item detail report. So all those posts, once that post is complete and successful, it's going out, going to go out to their file archive for 2023 under per pay reports. So again, they might wanna go in there, double check those reports went out there to file archive. And the reason why mine's not showing because None of these um, are this updates um, every so often and then it just completely wipes everything out. So yeah, this is why I'm not showing my file archive. So I'm just gonna hurry up and put all those in there. There's my file archive. Okay. So then um, my 21, um, well, mine's 21 pay reports, but they're all there. So again, that would be a good thing to put in their notes, check file archive after they post their payroll to make sure those reports went out there to the file archive. Okay. All right, um, the next thing. All right, so if they need to ch uh, fix something at this time, they can do this um, on post payroll at this time yet. Um, the stipulations for on posting a payroll, um, it has to be in the current period that it's trying to on post. So if I'm like, I'm in August right now and you're in September and you're like, oh my gosh, I got to on post. Um, you have to go back to your post period. That's only if you didn't process your outstanding payables, of course. So if no, um, that's like your point of no return. Um, if you process your payments, outstanding payables. So that once you do that and process your outstanding payables here, this is going to be non-modifiable anymore. You won't be able to have that. So again, it's always good to make sure that your payroll, uh, their payroll is um, good before they do the outstanding payables. Um, all right, so I think that's it on that. Um, all right, and the next thing would be if you, um, now we're gonna process payments. So this is going to be your checks if you still have districts that um, 
process checks for um, employees or direct deposits. So I don't know if I have anybody in checks, but I'll go ahead and process just in case. Again, if you have to use a third party X, um, company, then they're gonna select the XML and then they'll send that to their third party software. If they just print the old fashioned way, the PDF, which I'm gonna do. And then again, um, if they use, um, and they use the bank account that they have set up. And again, they can do different options on the sort by if they um, are still printing by checks for all their employees. So you know, if they have multiple buildings that they have to sort by, um, this can be very useful. I'm just gonna do it by employee name. Um, the check number should automatically fill in for them the name of the file, and again, check form. Maybe they have um, a different um, form that they're using. Um, I'm just gonna use default at this time. And then we're gonna go and process payments. Again, I don't know if I have anybody for checks. We'll see. Nope, I don't. So if you did, you would have a person here um, with a check. But I do have people for direct deposits, so I will go ahead and print that. Um, you do have the option to print all direct deposits. That's just going to pr print everybody, email, even um, employees that are selected only to get emails, um, email direct deposit notices. That is going to print them plus the ones that are just not email. So it's email people, um, direct deposit notices, and non-email direct deposit notices. That's what this flag is for. So I'll go ahead and process that. And you can also, a lot of districts probably have like their own form set up so they can select that, um, that form that they're using. So here is my direct deposit for um, if I'm going to print these and just hand, hand them out to the district, to the employee, excuse me. Okay. Um, and again, um, the XML for direct deposits, um, they will have to make sure they select that. Okay. The other thing that they probably will want to do is the email notices then. I'm not going to actually um, schedule it because if I do, um, I don't, I don't want to accidentally send to an email address that might be out there. Um, again, they have the option to set up when they want this to go out. A lot of districts um, run their payroll and then they set it up for that Friday to go out Friday morning. So if I wanna set it up for Friday morning at two o'clock in the morning, I can do that. So now um, tomorrow, uh, tonight, tomorrow morning at 2 a.m., they'll go out to the, all the employees' uh, email direct deposits to their, and they'll, they should get them by the time um, they are at work. Again, um, you select what bank account it comes from, if they have multiples, and if they have a default direct deposit notice um, that they use. And then they would schedule that. And then what that would do, once I schedule that, um, which I'm not gonna do, you go out to job scheduler and they can verify that that's out here. And it will say direct deposit and it'll say status of pending. And then they can check to make sure if they said nobody, like, wait, you know, our people are calling, nobody's getting their email notices. Why? You can go out here and see if it aired out. Or maybe they had the wrong time entered. That's a big one. They might have put the wrong date in. And then what they can do is just delete that, go back into job, go back into their payroll, go back to the email notices, and they can just go ahead and leave the date as is and schedule. It will send them out immediately. So always I always have them double check the job scheduler because that will show to make sure they selected the right date. Um, maybe the right year got entered wrong or the time. So job scheduler is always a good idea to double check um, to make sure that it's out there, it's scheduled, it looks good, it says it's pending, perfect. And then if they come back and say, well, it did say it's completed, I bet they probably put the wrong date in. 
And um, if it would maybe it could have been for a prior year or a prior month and it will say completed because it thinks it's already did it. So, okay, any questions on that? And again, if you do, um, you can chat because I don't think my volume's working. Okay, uh, let's see. I was trying to think of something else. I wanna make sure I have out there. I think I went over, I went over the post on post payroll. and all the reports, prices, payments, on post. Yep, and again, if they do the on post payroll, um, again, they always give them a confirm to make sure, because once you do that, um, you're gonna go back to the on post, and then you can go ahead and make your corrections at that time. Okay, um, let's see, let me make sure I went over everything. Mm -hmm. Where's my thing? Okay, it looks like I went over everything that I was going to go over today. Like I said, today's the pipe was going to be a little shorter um, because tomorrow she's going to go over then the follow up after payroll process. Um, and then they're going, we're going to start. Uh, where is my down here in appendix? checklist, payroll process. And we're going to start then down here. I took you to 22. Ready to schedule. So then she's gonna come back tomorrow and she's going to start at 22. And then this, these are gonna be the reports after the fact, what need to be ran. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to post that payroll because that way she can use that for tomorrow. Um, is there any questions um, on what kind of what we went over today? Um, okay, could you please repeat what you said about delete payroll versus delete? Sure can. Okay, let me go ahead and on post that payroll one more time. We had a question on um, the, the, the difference between delete payroll and delete payroll exceptions. And that is confusing, I, I agree, because, okay. So the difference between delete payroll would be, okay, um, if you brought in your payroll, any, you, you started, you initialized your payroll and you brought everybody in. So now I have an employee, let's say Zimmerman here. Kayla Zimmerman, she was brought in automatically into from um, future into my current payroll. So now if I go in and add a miscellaneous pay maybe to her already pay group that is under my future, that is listed under here, oh, excuse me, under current, as it was brought in, this is going to stay when you do delete payroll. Now, if you add, an employee that never was brought in from initializing payroll, um, completely new employee, new position that you're adding in current, that's not gonna stay if you use the delete payroll. No, um, so if you're, and then also for like maybe um, my Fitzpatrick was another employee I used as an example. Oh, they did. Where is it at? Oh, down there. Sorry. So then here is an employee that I was, she, he never was brought in on the payroll um, from initializing payroll, never was never brought in. I totally added um, this new miscellaneous pay for this position too for this employee. So when I went in and I delete, um, delete the payroll, just delete, not the exceptions. Only person, only thing it's going to keep is this miscellaneous pay right here. Because this pay, this employee was brought in when I initialized payroll from the very beginning. Okay, does that make sense? And then if you do delete payroll and exceptions, that's going to completely wipe out anything that you added during current and completely start you over. It's going to wipe out everything. It's not going to bring like this. If I delete payroll right now, it's going to bring this miscellaneous pay and it's going to put it back into future and keep it there. 
So then when I reinitialize payroll again, it's going to bring in that miscellaneous pay from Zimmerman and keep it and bring it back into current. But everybody else that I added, Zimmerman and Fitzpatrick, going to be gone because they weren't initially brought in to the payroll at that time when I initialized. It was something I added on top new of the payroll, current payroll. Does that make sense? I hope so. Hope I was trying to explain it. I think so. It is very confusing, but if you play around with it, um, cause that's what I kind of did. So I could um, um, explain it to you. Cause you know, even though in our um, documentation, it, 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 it can be confusing on um, how it's list, how it's uh, stating. But I guess one way to think about it, if you're initializing payroll, you're bringing an employee in to payroll that already has a job and you go in and add a miscellaneous pay to that job, it's going to keep it. But then you're like, oh, I forgot completely to add a time slip for an employee. He never was brought in to the initialization through from future to current. And you're adding that current pay and he's, he's not on the pay report right now at all. And then you add that miscellaneous pay. If you do delete payroll, it's going to delete him out because he was never, that is considered an exception, I should say. Exception pay time slip, I guess I should say. But so that, that's kind of how, how, how I, 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 I learned from just going ahead and doing like three different scenarios, Zimmerman, and a missed pay on a regular job is not an exception. No, because he was already brought in. If he was brought in with the pay from the very beginning and you added a miscellaneous pay under that same job number, he's fine. It's going to keep it. But if you add a position, if I go in and add a position number two to Zimmerman and say, oh, I'm going to add a position number two for him and add a miscellaneous pay, that's going to be deleted out. Because that position number two was never brought in when you initialize payroll from the very beginning. So that's considered current and you added it. The only reason why this miscellaneous pay is staying for Zimmerman is because he already was brought into the payroll from future. I added a missed pay to add extra money to that job, then that's what that's the difference. All right, any other questions on that? And I'm so sorry that my, you're welcome. So sorry that my volume is not working and I'm gonna get that working after we're off here today. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I hope you learned some new things today um, on this. I tried to highlight everything that I could think of um, of running a payroll that could be helpful in understanding. Okay. Um, Again, thank you for joining us tomorrow at nine o'clock. Again, Lori is going to be going over the third day after the payroll process um, of what reports to run. All right, thank you. Thank you and you all have a fine Thursday day.